Hey guys, so um, this video is just going to be kind of a ranty update on what it's like to be a targeted individual when you actually have responsibilities to other people. So everybody knows that, you know, I'm, I'm a caregiver for my for my elderly mother, and she she's not really that old, but she she does have certain mental illness that makes her. Um, not the best at caring for herself. And it, it puts a lot of stress on me. I, I'm her sole caregiver and, you know, I, I've been dealing with her, you know, alone for, for 20 something years now, maybe 15 plus, closer to 20, without help. And I'm, I'm worn down. I, I'm, I'm, you know, Today I actually threatened to call her brother, and that was, you know, that's probably the worst threat I can make, only because he's a monster. She has two brothers, and they're both kind of bad, but one is, is he, he's just a total monster. He's in the military, he's got a lot of power. He has no patience, you know, he, a lot of power, very little responsibility, very little accountability, and very little restraint. You know, he, if he can restrain himself initially, it's only because in the long run, he's going to punish whoever he thinks has, um, you know, done something wrong. And the punishment is usually severe. So, you know, he... I haven't all this time called him because I know that if I called him, that's it. You know, I, my struggle ends, but... I don't know what would happen to my mother in the past, you know, and this was years ago, maybe 20, 25 years ago, 30 years ago. I, I don't remember. It was a while back, but, um, he was talking to her for five minutes and he got so frustrated. He has so little patience. He, he grabbed her and he shook her. And I don't remember how long ago it was. I, I'm such a bad judge of time. It's it probably, it wasn't that long ago. Um, it, it was years and years ago, but not, not 30 years ago, maybe 20. I don't know. He, he grabbed her and he shook her so hard. He left dents in her arms. He left marks in her arms. You know, I, every time I think of calling him just to make my own life easier, I think of that and I fear for what would happen to her under his care. And of course, he wouldn't actually care for her himself. He would brush off the responsibility on others. You know, it, it's, that's how it goes. They, they, you know, they, they don't have the kind of patience to do this job. Um, it's hard. It's hard when you're the sole caregiver of someone who's severely mentally ill and who's very difficult and who's just dead set on destruction, especially when they have, you know, I, I, she's never been diagnosed with OCD, but I, I don't know. You know how, um, sometimes people with OCD, they just have to touch things. Like if they know they're not supposed to do it, they have to do it. So they're going to just touch the hot stove, touch it over and over again. You know, well, this is becoming a big issue. You know, she always does things that she knows she's not supposed to. And she did that with, with her brothers too. And it's why they, they would grab her physically and shake her. It's why they would shake their fist in her face and curse at her. And, you know, it, it her insistence on trying to piss people off on doing exactly what she's told not to and, and in their face too, on, uh, you know, her, her inability to reason honestly and accurately. Well, I've managed to deal with this for, for, for a while now, for a long time, but now that we're in the middle of a deadly pandemic, it's all bearing down on me and I'm, I'm losing my mind. Like today, it's a good thing I wear, I wear dark glasses in these videos because I was crying earlier and screaming and hitting the walls. I, so today, you know, I, she, she had a, she has an appointment and she hasn't left the apartment since the pandemic and I've barely left, but today she had an appointment and I'm always worried because I used to go with her to, to, to appointments. But once I, I became aware that people were coming into the apartment and doing things and tampering with the food and, you know, you know, that it was actually someone coming in and opening the windows when we're not here and that's how they get open or turning the clock back. And that's how it got turned back. You know, I realized if one of us isn't here at all times, they're going to come in and do something. And, you know, I've covered as, as much, ter you know, open space, uh, as many holes as possible where, where hidden cameras could be because they've had people literally repeat to me things I've said and done in the apartment. 
So I don't know, you know, what, what they would do when they, when they come in, would they tamper with the food, would they replace cameras, you know, I, so one of us has to be here at all times. And this is the difficulty. It's the organized stalkers who are putting me in a situation where I, I, I'm trying to protect my mother from them. I'm trying to protect our apartment and guard it so that they can't come in here, but then I can't protect her when she's out. Right. It's, it's, um, I, I don't know what to do. So I was getting her ready to go and it's a difficult situation because someone, you know, who, who behaves the way she does, you, they're going to do what they know they shouldn't. So on one hand, if you tell them not to do it, they're going to do it right away. And it's going to be in your face just to show you, Hey, I can do this if I want to. But on the other hand, if you don't tell them, if you don't warn them that this could lead to, you know, disease, they're not going to know. And plus they're going to do it anyway. Like she, and I, I've, I've said before, she has a habit of rubbing her eyes and rubbing her mouth and, and her hands go in her mouth and her nose. And, and this is, it's always been this way. And this is why every year she gets sick from something, right? So she was sitting down and, you know, I, I, I put the mask on her and because in the building you have to wear a mask anyway. And I put her gloves on her plastic gloves and, you know, the, the rubber gloves. And I, I, you know, I reminded her that, okay, that this doesn't mean you can touch your face now, right? If, if whatever you touch with the gloves will, will contaminate the gloves. So you're still going to contaminate whatever you touch. She swore up and down. She knows, she knows, I, you know, I put her shoes on. So she wouldn't have to touch them. Of course, she can. She's perfectly capable of putting her own shoes on, but I did it so she wouldn't have to touch them and get her hands dirty or gloves dirty. And then she does it. She she lifts her hands to and rub, rubs her eyes. You know, and um, a few minutes after she swore, she swore, she swore she wouldn't. And then she looked at me expectantly, like she she knew she did something wrong. She expected me to get angry. This is what. And I, I did, I got, I got angry. I got so angry. I got so angry. This is why she gets sick every year. But this time, if she gets sick, she could die. Uh, I yelled, I screamed, and I said some really mean things that I didn't mean. I am, I am so effing tired. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep her safe. And now it's not just the organized stalkers that I'm protecting her from, but this, this stinking effing virus. It's, it's just like the, there's a ton of bricks on me and more are being added. And this isn't my natural state. You know, I, I take care of her because I love her. If I, if I, if I didn't, I would have handed her over to her brothers already and let them do what they want. You know, to put her wherever they want. I haven't done that because I love her. But, you know, it, this is not my, my, this, it's not my nature. I'm not that patient. I'm more patient than they are. <laughs> But I'm not that patient. I'm not that, you know, my, my nature is to help people. You know, I want to right whatever wrongs are being committed against others. That's why I was a human rights activist for so long and still am. But my nature is to go out there and actually do something. It's, I, I'm not a handholder. I, I, I don't have the patience to just sit by someone and deal with them, especially if they're incredibly difficult and trying to provoke and trying to, to you know, to, to spite you and, and, doing dangerous things that they know are dangerous, but doing it anyway, just to spite you. I, I don't have the patience, right? You know, I, I'm not a natural caregiver. I'm, I'm a natural protector for sure, but not in this way. But sometimes these jobs just fall on people, whether or not it's their nature. And this is, this is, I think what causes so much trouble in society. You know, I do this out of love, not because it, it's a suited role for me and I am, I'm, I'm breaking down. It's too much now. You know, the stalkers, the virus, her mental illness. It's, it's just too much. The things I said today were very mean. I didn't mean them, but you know, sometimes you just can't take things back.